Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourselves, all those kind of things. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Great to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you how I edit my photos using various software products. Today I'm in Luminar AI, which is still in beta, but will be out of beta pretty soon because it's going to be available on December 15th. So it's going to be in your hands very soon. But I've had a number of questions as I continue to do these various videos about the product. I've had a number of questions, people asking me, hey, how do you remove spots or remove objects from Luminar AI, uh, you know, from your photos using Luminar AI? And there's really two ways to do it. You have an eraser tool and you have a clone and stamp tool. And they're, they're used uh, differently. And although they accomplish the same basic idea, they're different tools, they operate differently. And there's a few things you need to know about them. So I thought this would be kind of a high level overview of a race versus clone and stamp, the differences, that sort of thing, and how to use them. Here's a photo. If you look in the upper left, you can see a big spot on my lens. So this is perfect for the eraser tool, which is right here on the essentials tab. Now, in previous version, like Luminar 4, Luminar 3, anytime you use either one of these tools, eraser or clone and stamp, it would create a new layer. It would be an erased image layer or a clone and stamp layer, but it no longer does that. In Luminar AI, it's basically in your filter stack, so it's what, what you call a live edit, just like using any of the sliders on these tools down here to Im impact structure or color or whatever. Um, erase works the same way. So I think that's pretty cool because it doesn't create another layer and therefore doesn't slow down where you might have the potential slowdown in performance as you add multiple layers. So you have a couple of options, select and deselect. Um, I'll, let me show you the difference. Select is basically um, what you want to do. You want to get your mouse and you can use the bracket key to increase or decrease the size. I usually recommend getting the mouse about the size of the spot I'm taking out and then you just click on it and that's select. Now if you decide, you know, if you're, you're moving your mouse and you accidentally drag a line like that, that's what deselect is. You can come to deselect and I'll increase my brush for this and then you can just paint over something that you accidentally painted on because you don't want to remove that, for example. Also, if you hit the X key, at least on a Mac, that will allow you to bounce back and forth between select and deselect. You'll notice the plus, which is, hey, I'm painting on. This is where I want to paint, so I want to add paint. Paint being the pinkish red color that's on top of the spot. And minus is I don't want to paint. I want to remove it. So if I accidentally uh, paint somewhere, I can remove it that way. Hope that makes sense. But basically, I'm going to shrink my mouse again. Once you have that spot marked, you just hit erase and it'll go ahead and it'll erase that spot from your photo. And there you go. Now, if you decide you don't like that, you can hit this little button here and that'll reset your photo and there's my spot again. So this time I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make that mark, but say I want a clear selection because I also wanted to take out that tree and that little bird well, if I want a clear selection, I can just hit clear selection and it will remove all of those. Just keep that in mind. It doesn't remove, clear selection will remove everything. So if you have, you know, one and two and three, but you just want to remove two and three, that's where you would use deselect and come in and paint those over because you want to keep those in the photo. So deselect is for that, whereas clear selection will undo basically everything you've painted all at once. But I'm going to go ahead and erase that spot. I'm going to say erase and my spot is gone. My photo looks great and now I'm happy. Now let me click over to the pro tab. And so when you get to pro tab, clone and stamp is here and clone and stamp is different. You'll see automatically you come up with a menu that says click to set the source. Here's the main difference between erase and clone and stamp. Erase, you're painting over something you want to get rid of and you're basically saying, hey Luminar, take care of that for me. I don't know what you're going to put there and I don't really care. I just hope it looks good and just take care of it, right? So you're basically giving control to the app to take out whatever it is you want to take out. In Clone and Stamp, you're taking out stuff by painting over it, which is what I'm about to do, but you're telling it what the source is. And that's what they're saying here where it says click to set the source. You're telling the app, all right, I'm going to paint over something that I want you to remove and I'm going to set the source and I want you to take what my source is and use that to paint over the object I'm removing. So let me show you. You have a big horse right here, and I want to click to set the source. Well, let's pretend this horse's butt I don't want to look at for whatever reason. And to set the source, you just click anywhere. So I'm going to pick grass that's kind of similar to what's around him. So I'm going to pick that right there. And now I'm going to shrink my mask or my, my brush to something like that. And what you do is you just kind of paint over it, right? And as you paint over it, you can see that what is happening 
is I'm removing that horse. Now, sometimes when you get to painting too far, you'll end up taking some of the original stuff that you're trying to remove and painting it somewhere else. So what I recommend is you click, you can just hit option and pick a new source and then come over here and paint again. And that will allow you to, by resetting the source, it allows you to basically get the pattern in the grass right and also remove anything that might have been messed up. So it's really powerful, but you can see I just took that horse out. You can't tell it's there unless you just knew that it was there like we do because you saw me take it out, but it's quick, it's powerful. And let's say I wanna take out this horse over here because maybe I want this brown one that's facing me to be by himself. So in this case, I'm gonna say option and I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna come over and I'm just gonna paint over this horse and all I'm doing is basically just taking the grass that that right little target shows and painting it into where this horse once stood. Now, I don't really like that top piece, so I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna hit the option key again and hit that and then just paint a little bit like that. And I think that's blended together nicely. And now I've got that horse separated because I cloned that first horse on, his, on my left out and the other horse on the other side of him out, and they're gone. Now that horse is by himself, kind of separated from the other horses, which is what I was going for. And note that if you hit this reset button, it'll reset the photo back to how it was. Now a thing that I think a lot of people do is they'll use the eraser tool for the small spots, and they'll use clone and stamp for the big spots. I think that makes a lot of sense. It depends on what you want to do. But the eraser will also work fine on larger items as well. I could go back up here to eraser, and I could now take out this bigger horse if I wanted to, and just paint over him, and hit erase, and he's gone as well. So you can use these tools in combination on the same image, and sometimes I will do that. You might erase it and really like how he's erased, except for maybe a little bit of that grass doesn't really sit well with you visually, you could then go to clone and stamp and then clone in some grass nearby to fix the look of the grass. And that's really how it works. Eraser, generally used for smaller stuff and you're telling the app, take it out and replace it with something that you think makes sense there. And honestly, most of the time, it works really well. Clone and stamp, on the other hand, you are using to remove objects. However, you're telling what pixels you wanna put in place of the pixels that are being removed. So you're in control and you're telling the app what to do in clone and stamp versus in erase, you're letting the app choose for you. Hopefully that highlights the differences between the two tools, how you can use them, how they operate, and where they are in Luminar AI because it is a different position than it was in Luminar 4. Both work great, they come in super handy. I highly recommend checking those out. And that's my overview of erase and clone and stamp and how they work in Luminar AI. Hope it helps my friends. Thanks for watching, I'll see you really soon. Take care of yourselves and adios.